Hello and welcome for trying to solve. I'm Andrew Hubert. Hope you're having a great 2019. To commemorate the new year, we're starting a new series here at China Solved. So you're leaving China. How to leave China without losing friends or offending people. Part one. The takeaway from today's talk: Leaving China now may make sense, but returning later in some form might make sense as well. So I'm suggesting that you structure your exit so that you can return, or even better, so you can work with your Chinese, your existing Chinese network outside of China. Please take a second to like and subscribe on YouTube, and if you're watching this on LinkedIn, join the China Solved group. The table of contents for today's talk. So you're leaving China. You'll be back. Where will you land? End on a positive note. So section one, you'll be back. How clear are your signals here? What if a trade deal works? What are your true drivers? Let's look at each of those in a little bit more detail. How clear are your signals right now? We may have gone from zero to panic in about sixty seconds on our、uh, China trade conflict. Some of the news that's coming out of the State Department and Fox News right now has been exaggerated, taken out of context, or describes situations that have existed for twenty years or more. Now, for some industries, especially manufacturing and many kinds of purchasing, those guys have been getting very, very clear indicators for a long time that、uh, they should probably be looking elsewhere. So, for the rest of you, is this a good time to make the leap if you've been a long time looker? Yes, maybe I don't know. But if you have any plans to develop a market or new products within China, then you want to plan that exit very carefully. And part of that is costing out your new base, and I mean the whole cost, not just the tariff cost or the labor cost. The early days of China outsourcing, and I worked with a lot of multinationals, and I was always a little bit shocked that Western engineers and Western accountants had such. Wildly differing views of the cost environment, and the reason is they were both both sides were being overwhelmed by local business practices that just weren't appropriate. And the same thing is going to happen to you when you start setting up a new supply chain in a new market. So the more you know in advance, the better. Next, how good are you at fear of missing out? So what if there is a trade deal? American risk analysis is all about limiting loss from failure, but in Asia, most of your real risk comes from success, because that's when you have something to acquire, something to steal. And right now, that bar in China is pretty low.、Uh, China can get much more attractive very fast, especially for certain specific industries or technologies. So, if you are prone to、uh, regret and remorse, then you might want to go a little bit slowly on this decision. And you should check that by analyzing your true drivers. If you are a manufacturer and your real drivers here are cost and IP security, then yeah, you can probably plan on leaving China as soon as possible. But if you're being driven by tariffs and by regulations and maybe even by market access, then you've got to keep your options open. Flying away might be great, but the question is, where will you land? Has your industry already chosen a new spot? Do you still need or want to be in the international business, and do you know how to assemble all the pieces of your supply chain? So the hard work may have been done for you because most international expat-driven industries tend to move in flocks. So your industry may have already decided what your new base will be. Now, ASEAN is probably the least disruptive move for right now. But just make sure you aren't setting yourself up for a new round of sanctions and tariffs and regulatory problems when everyone back in D.C. figures out what people in Asia have known for a while that Vietnam is shaping up to be the new China. Next, do you still need or want to do the international part?、Uh, some people who have been working in China have developed a strong brand and a big customer following, and international work may not be the best use of their time. This is especially because Shenzhen and the other Chinese special economic zones added a certain type of value. They provided clusters of manufacturers and service providers all in one physical place, so it was relatively easy for you or the people working for you to shop around. You may have to replace that physical closeness with specialists who know where things are distributed around the map. 
And that leads to the next issue. You are going to have to assemble the pieces of your new supply chain. You're not in Guangzhou anymore. And it's going to take some legwork to replace tools like Alibaba and that Shenzhen cluster of manufacturers and the Canton Fair, etc. And finally, when you do leave, make sure you leave the door open. Let's talk about people, bureaucracy, and network. When it comes to people, stay classy, foreigners. <laughs> this, this is the important one. Watch out for unintended political or social criticism. Your frustration with China is not a reason to vent at Chinese partners or factory managers that you may be talking to a few months from now in places like Vietnam or Malaysia. So let's check your skills with a quick China Solve mini quiz. How should you inform local partners that you plan on leaving China? Is it A, you're all a bunch of jerks? Or B, the numbers just don't work? Pause if you need to. If you said B, the numbers just don't work, congratulations. You are an international cross-cultural trade expert. Next, let's look at the uh, open door policy for dealing with bureaucracy. And that is get experts and cross every T and dot every I and whatever the Hansa version of that is. In business, you are going to need a lawyer and you're going to have to unwind your registrations, your partnerships, and deal with your HR issues because if you hire people, you have HR issues. Next, your household. Check everything. If you own real estate, figure out what you're going to do. Make sure you're, you're right about taxes, licenses, uh, any bank accounts, any other accounts you have, anything having to do with visas. Just make sure that you have closed out all your outstanding issues and tied up your loose ends. Next, leave the door open as far as your networks. Now, the good news is that Western networks tend to travel around in big packs, and you will not have trouble identifying other foreigners involved in business that you care about. But I want to also shine the light on the Chinese overseas networks, sometimes called the Chinese diaspora. It has been active and important for a long time, and in particular, Chinese manufacturers and uh, trade people have been spreading out for years into Southeast Asia and further, and in some cases, centuries. And this is typified by one ethnic group from China, the Hakka people. And you can think of them as the original power networkers of Asia. Hakkas were originally from Guangdong, but they spread out throughout China because of, I think, environmental problems, floods. But they've set up some truly impressive networks, both throughout Southeast Asia and abroad. If you know the Chinese community in Malaysia or Vietnam, something like one out of every five Chinese you know is Hakka. Taiwan is largely Hakka. The Hakka are still very important in southern China and Hong Kong and the West Coast of the United States. Well, you get the idea. Famous Hakka include Sun Yat-sen, Li Kuan Yu, Deng Xiaoping, and Li Deng Hui. And you probably already know Hakka, and I'm telling you to start accessing and leveraging the, the connections you already have in the Chinese business community before you say goodbye. This is a huge resource that is going to be a competitive advantage for those with China experience, no matter where you go. Final word, Westerners in China have a reputation for pulling up stakes and leaving town at the first sign of trouble, and those of you leaving now are confirming that stereotype. So to protect yourself, and even to turn this situation to your advantage, you want to operate in a way that A, gives you the ability to go back into China, but B, and what could be more important, to deal with the same people and the same networks outside of China. Thanks very much for China Solved. I'm Andrew Huber. This has been the China Negotiator. So you want to leave China, part one. For further reading, please take a look at The Fragile Bridge, Conflict Management in Chinese Business, and 10 Common China Negotiation Mistakes. Thanks again. Have a great 2019.